How does a consistent top half team that would fight for a European spot go from two former UCL winning managers to now going back to back seasons fighting for survival? Today, we'll be talking about Everton Football Club and its tragic downfall. Welcome to World of Foot. My name's Eddie, and we'll be finding out what went wrong with Everton. Everton FC was founded in 1878 and has become a consistent team in the first flight of English football for well over 60 years. The last time they were relegated, Spurs won the league. That alone should be enough to show you how long they have been in the first tier of English football. Everton have won 9 league titles and 5 FA Cups. From the season of 0405 to 2020 to 2021, they finished between 4th place and 12th place, with 4 of those seasons being in European football spots and other 4 of those seasons being below 10th place. So this brings up the question, how do they go from that consistency to finishing in 16th last season and 17th currently at this time of recording? Everton currently has England's number one, which is a whole other video on its own, and several other internationals on their team, yet they can't manage to scrap any winning runs. Given, I'm not saying that their squad is full of all-stars, but they have the quality to stay afloat in the Premier League. They brought in nine players this season to try to better their situation from last year. But were they the correct signings? Neil Mopé, for $15 million, is one of the signings that have turned out to be a gigantic flop. Injuries have also been a cause for concern. Andros Townsend has had a cruciate ligament injury since March 2022, and their key man up top, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, has missed 14 games this season due to several injury problems. Even with injuries and nine players brought in during the transfer window, Everton has progressively gotten worse. One reason could be that the teams that would normally not do well in the Prem have been either overachieving or have mastered their tactics, which in turn has brought them results. In terms of management, Everton has gone through 14 different managers in the past 10 years. Two of these are Carlo Ancelotti, who most recently won the Champions League with Real Madrid, and Rafa Benitez, who led Everton's big brother Liverpool to Champions League glory. Ancelotti decided to leave Everton due to him claiming he had no support from the owners. Ancelotti ended his two-year stint at the club with a 10th place finish and a 12th place finish. They then appointed Frank Lampard, who had recently been sacked by Chelsea. Lampard only lasted a year at the club and had them finishing in 16th. This brings us to now, with Sean Dyche, the self-proclaimed boring one, to try to salvage the club's descent into the championship. In my opinion, I think this is a good signing for the club. He kept Burnley afloat for eight years after getting them promoted and has experiences in situations like the one Everton finds themselves in. With the constant changes in management and lackluster signings, it's pretty clear why Everton is on the path to playing teams like Hull City in the championship. But who's the man behind these changes? In 2016, a British-Iranian businessman named Farhad Moshidi purchased 49.9% of the shares of Everton Football Club and later increased it to 94%. At the time, Everton was coming off an 11th place finish with David Unsworth as their gaffer. Moshidi then sacked Unsworth and appointed Ronald Koeman, who led the Toffees to a respectable 7th place spot. Everton has not finished that high in the table since. The common trend for Everton ever since has been a team that finishes with a negative goal differential, and ever since their 7th place finish, Everton has only finished with a positive goal differential two times in a total of 7 seasons, with their highest scoring season being 64 goals and their lowest being 43. Defensively, they have conceded 318 goals from 2016-17 to 2021-22. Everton has attempted to sign players and fix their issues in front of goal and defending it, but having 14 different managers in 10 seasons won't help, regardless of signings. According to Transfermarkt, Everton has spent 700 million euros on signings from 2016-17 to now. Liverpool has spent $754 million in the same time period. This is a key figure to look at. Obviously, the recruitment team and board have not done a good enough job in terms of their signings. Clearly, though, there has been investment in the club to better its squad. But constantly changing managers will not help with that. Managers are being forced to play players that the previous gaffer signed. The inconsistency in management and tactics makes all the money spent seem pointless. Everton's two biggest signings have been Gilfie Sigurdsson for $50 million and Richarlison for $40 million. The Gilfie situation is something I do not want to touch on, but that being said, the board should not be to blame for what the player has done. With all this money spent on players though, you would expect a team like Everton to be fighting for mid-table, not fighting to survive in the Prem. 
The trend that I've noticed from Everton is signing players who are no longer wanted by big teams. But that's an issue on its own. Signing players just because they're in a big team doesn't mean that they'll perform at the level of their previous squad. They spent $75 million on three players that, are, that were sporadic Barcelona players, such as Yerry Mina, André Gomes, and Lucas Digne. Yerry Mina cost them 30 million euros, even though he only played six total games for Barcelona. It's a shame to see such a historic club be in the situation that they're in, but they're at fault for this. The future is unclear for Everton. As I'm recording this video, they're tied in points with Nottingham Forest with an extra game. Sean Dyche is capable of keeping them alive for this season in my opinion, but the way Everton has carelessly spent their money makes it hard to believe that they won't be in the same situation next season. Creating a long-term plan with a manager to build around would be the best option, but considering the track record Everton have, it doesn't seem likely. Even though Everton has been in the Premier League for so long, there are other teams that are fighting to get back to the first flight of English football after focusing on rebuilding their club in a proper manner. As the season is coming to an end, Everton needs to fight to stay afloat. In this sport, there are no guarantees. Everton put themselves in this situation with a constant lack of performances, constant changes in management, and lackluster signings. Everton's tragic downfall is just one of many clubs that I plan on researching for future videos. Thank you for watching, make sure to like and subscribe, and comment on what team you'd like me to cover next. Until next time, peace. Thank you.